How to walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You and I, my friend, are instructed in the Word of God to walk by the Spirit, to walk by the means of the Holy Spirit. Literally, each and every day we are to continually walk by the Spirit's power and guidance. This is not one experience, one endeavor, but daily we are instructed to continually walk by the Spirit, minute by minute, day by day, week by week, month by month. This is a command. Not to pastors only. This is a command not to prophets only. This is a command not to missionaries only. This is a command to everyone, even the everyday garden variety grassroots Christians. In my years of ministry, I've found that a lot of people struggle to believe that they can walk with the Holy Spirit. But here we have it. We are instructed to walk with him daily. We are to walk with the Holy Spirit. He is in us. Stop blocking your walk with the Holy Spirit. When we talk about walking in the Spirit, the first thing that comes to our mind is that we must be spiritual. We believe that walking in the Spirit means something like walking on water or walking in another world. Walking in the Spirit means not yielding to the urge of the flesh to sin. It means dying to sin and then constantly living in the life of Christ. To live like Christ is not something a mere man can achieve by his power. Everything we do in this life has something driving it. There is something that pushes you to do something. You wake up and go to work in the morning. Before you go to work, there are some things you'll do. All these things are driven by something. Your actions have something backing them. Walking in the Spirit means allowing the Spirit of God to tell you what to do, to make the Spirit of God be the one behind your action. Walking in the Spirit also means allowing the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to usher your steps in the way of Christ, the Christian living. When you walk in the Spirit, you follow the leading of the Spirit, and this will take you away from the lust of the flesh. The Holy Spirit will never make you lust after sinful things. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. What we need to know now is how to walk in the Spirit. We need to know what to do if we want to continue to walk in the Spirit. Number one, acknowledge you still have a fleshy nature and he or she is the enemy. The flesh will always have the urge to make you fall. It will always want to keep you in the bondage of sin. And anyone who is a slave to sin will never walk in the Spirit. The first thing you need to know is that the flesh is a hindrance to you. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 of the King James Version says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You need to decide that you want to render the flesh powerless over your life. Are you okay with the flesh pushing you to commit adultery and putting you in situations that you don't want to be in? Are you okay with the flesh making you hate others and store them in your heart? Are you okay with the flesh pushing you towards fornication? The answer to all of these questions is no. The reason why acknowledging you still have a fleshy nature that you must subdue is important, because it highlights the importance of us continually walking in the Spirit. The flesh doesn't need a week to perform its work. One hour of walking in the flesh is more than enough time for you to commit adultery or envying or murders. So we are to continually walk in the Spirit each and every day. The flesh wants what it wants, and it is waiting. The second step is for us to obey the Holy Spirit. One thing is to have the Holy Spirit, yet it is another thing to have the fruit of the Spirit. Some people believe when they have the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit start showing automatically. It is called fruits, and there are some things that must be in place to make them come forth. One of them is obedience to the Holy Spirit. You need to obey the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, he is just ordering your steps in the ways of Christ. 
When you start to walk in the path of Christ, you start to become like him. And that is when the fruits start showing. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible does not say work for your salvation. We know you can't work for your salvation. But the Bible says work it out. In other words, once you are saved, be serious with it. Don't be casual about your salvation. Work it out with fear and trembling. Obey the Holy Spirit all the time. You need to stop acting as if you can do it on your own. That's what's called self-righteousness. When you believe that you can love people by your power or you can have self-control by your power. All of these things are what the Holy Spirit will teach you to have. And when you obey him, you will surely get the result. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. One of the ways we obey the Holy Spirit is simply by obeying his word. Too often we hear the word of God, but we don't make an active effort to live it out. James chapter 1 verse 22 but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We are not only to read the Bible, but are to also live it out. Obey the Holy Spirit. The third thing we are to do is to sow in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7-8 through 8 of the King James Version says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The first thing I want us to look into in this passage of the Bible is that God is not mocked. You cannot deceive God. There is nothing you do on earth. There is no appearance you might put on. You cannot deceive God. Just have this in your mind when what you're doing to make it seem like you're walking in the Spirit is not deceiving God. You are deceiving yourself. It would be an unwise idea to think you can make God think you are sowing in the Spirit when you are not. What are you taking God for? Who do you think God is? You cannot mock God by thinking you've deceived him. Knowing these facts, we'll move to the next, which says, It is what you reap that you will sow. If you are a farmer, or you know how farming works, if you cultivate a large piece of land and you plant corn, there's no way you'll reap mango. When you plant pineapple, you cannot expect corn to come out of it. It is what you sow, you will reap. And the Bible says when you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. But sowing in the spirit will give you everlasting life. The question now is, how do you sow in the spirit? I will start by asking, what are you doing with your time? Do you read the word of God? Do you pray all the time? Do you fast or do you do the works of God? Do you preach the gospel? All these things are sowing to the Spirit. When you dedicate your life to know God or to seek Him, you are sowing to the Spirit and you will reap everlasting life. When you seek Jesus and you follow Him, you are sowing to the Spirit. We spend time doing the things of the physical. We spend time chasing the things that will not go beyond this earth and then forget about the important things that will be with us till eternity. We forget about the Spirit. We are not feeding it with enough of God. We are not feeding our spirit with the Word of God. And this is destroying us, and it is not making us walk in the Spirit. When you feed your spirit with the things of God, you are teaching it to direct you to sow to the Spirit. And this will make you walk in the Spirit. If you have been putting your energy into the things of this world, it will result in lust, and that is corruption. With that, you cannot walk in the Spirit. Fourthly, depend on God and make him your number one. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 of the King James Version says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Bible also makes it clear that it is very dangerous to depend on man and not make God your number one. 
Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 6 of the King James Version says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. You cannot walk in the Spirit if you don't trust God. Walking in the Spirit means walking in the ways of the Lord, and you cannot do this if you don't even trust Him. There is also a word for those who trust God and depend on Him. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7-8 through 8 of the King James Version says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. If you want to walk in the Spirit, then you need to start trusting God. You need to start placing God above everything else in your life. When God says something to you, you must obey because you trust Him. Depend on Him when you pray. Depend on Him when you fast. You need to depend on God for everything you do. Walking in the Spirit is all about staying in the circle of God. And before you get to be in there, you must trust Him and depend on Him. Placing other things or other people above God in your life is idolatry. And that is the thing of the flesh. The goal is to walk in the Spirit and not to fulfill the desires of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, you will choose God in all you do. The first thing you will think of is God. Before you decide your life, you will seek God and you will never want to rely on your power. Joshua knew who God was and he chose God alone. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 of the King James Version. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you choosing God in everything you do? Are you walking in the Spirit? Know that you cannot deceive God. There is no way you will say you are walking in the Spirit when you are not. You need to walk in the Spirit with all your heart. Stop saying with your mouth alone. This is something that your heart must be involved in. The flesh is not ready to let you go. The flesh is not ready to set you free. It wants to keep you in bondage. It wants to make sure that you keep feeding it with lust and all evil. The flesh wants to keep you in sin. This is why you need to run to Jesus and start to walk in the spirit of God alone.